Hello guys and welcome back to Reading Club. So today I'm going to read you Daisy and the Trouble with Vampires, chapter 3 and chapter 4. Chapter 3. When I met my mom after school on Monday, I told her all about Jack. Daisy, she said, Jack and his friends are just trying to give the heebie-jeebies. There are no such things as werewolves, or foxes, or chickens, or were anythings. What about were puddles? I asked. Jack says if you tread in a puddle at midnight on Halloween night, when there is a full moon, you'll turn into a were goldfish. There are no such things as were goldfish either, said my mom. You shouldn't believe a single word Jack B. Trissel says. As soon as I was totally sure that Jack had been telling lies all day, I felt much better. I felt even happier when Mom told me that my nanny and grampy would be coming for Sunday lunch the day after Halloween. I love Sunday lunch, especially when we sit at the table and have a tablecloth and everything. It feels so special. Can we have a roast dinner? I said. Yes, said my mom. Can we have crackling? I asked. Yes, said my mom. Can we have roast potatoes? I asked. Yes, we can have roast potatoes, said my mom. You forgot Yorkshire puddings, whispered Gabby. Can we have Yorkshire puddings? I asked. Yes, we can have Yorkshire puddings, said my mom. Can we not have peas? I asked. Yes, we cannot have peas, sighed my mom. Or Brussels, I laughed. Definitely no Brussels, said my mom, smiling. But we can have gravy, I said. Yes, we can definitely have gravy, said my mom. If you're extra good, I'll make a triffle too. Before I said goodbye to Gabby, we made a BFF pack never to listen to Jack B. Jistle again. Unless we can't help it, she said. Unless we have no choice, I said. Because he's talking too loud, said Gabby. Or we're standing too close, I said. Apart from that, we are absolutely totally not going to listen to one single word Jack B. Jistle says ever again. Absolutely totally, said Gabby, opening her front gate and giving me a wave goodbye. Pinky promise, I said, giving her a wiggle wave back. Pinky promise, she shouted, wiggling her little finger back at me and then closing the, her front door. Pinky double promise, I shouted, holding both my little fingers up and then remembering to tell my mom not to forget the applesauce. I love applesauce, especially on roast dinners. Chapter 4 the trouble with pinky double promises is they are really hard to keep, especially during Halloween week. You'll never guess what Jack Beatrice said to everyone in the playground on Tuesday. He said, 666 is the devil's telephone number. Which means if you play hopscotch in the school playground during Halloween week, and you miss square sticks three times in a row, your head will explode. It was a good job Gabby and me have been listening because if we hadn't, we wouldn't have been able to tell everyone that Jack was telling whooping fibs again. How do you know I'm fibbing, said Jack. Because no one would ever play hopscotch in the school playground at midnight on Halloween night when there's a full moon, I shouted. Did I say anything about midnight, asked Jack. No, said Harry shaking his head really slowly. Did I even mention a full moon? asked Jack. No, said Colin, shaking his head even more slowly than Harry did. All I said was if you play hopscotch in the school playground during Halloween week, said Jack, stroking his chin and then giving me the evils with his eye. The trouble with Jack Beatrice giving you the evils with his eyes as it makes you want to give him the evils back. Trouble is, even trouble is, before I had even got my eyebrows into the right position, he had started clapping his hands, stamping his foot, and shouting, Dare, dare, dare! 
The trouble with someone shouting dare, dare, dare in the playground is it makes everyone else shout it too, even when they're meant to be on your side. If you're so sure that I'm fibbing, said Jack, then you won't be afraid to play Halloween hopscotch in front of us right here, right now, will you? He laughed. Stand back, everyone. You don't want to get Daisy's brains all over you when her head explodes. It was no good. Everyone was looking at me now, even Gabby. Not only that, the dare, dare, dare shouts had got even louder. Gabby told me I should take absolutely no notice of the dare, dare, dare shouts, but I absolutely had no choice. I was absolutely going to have to play Halloween hopscotch whether I wanted to or not. Even if my head ended up exploding. Even if my brains ended up going all over the playground. Luckily, I had a plan. My plan was to spend so long throwing my stone from square number one to square number five, I wouldn't have time to even get to number six before the lunch bell rang. Luckily, Jack had a plan too. And luckily, Jack had a plan too. He said I could start at square number six. The trouble with starting at square number six is it means you're in the danger zone straight away because you haven't had a chance to practice your stone throwing or rolling or anything. So I thought of another plan. My second plan was to spend so long looking for a stone to throw that the bell would ring before I even had a chance to start playing. Only Jack had a second plan, too. He got Colin and Harry to get a stone for me. When I said the stone they'd got me wasn't the right shape for rolling or throwing, the dare, dare, dare shouts changed to chicken, chicken, chicken shouts, so I had to start playing straight away. The trouble with playing straight away is that it's really hard to roll or throw a stone straight onto a number six hopscotch square, especially if you're using a wrong shaped stone. Double especially if you haven't had any practice. And triple especially if the chicken, chicken, chicken shouts change to miss, miss, miss shouts. Miss, miss, miss shouts can really put you off. So I missed. I tried really hard, but I still missed. As soon as my stone rolled past the number six square, everyone apart from Gabby started cheering, which was so wrong because I would never want to see someone's head explode in the playground playing hopscotch, not even Jack Beatrice's. But they still kept doing it and doing it and doing it, so I missed again, which meant I only had one throw left. The trouble with only having one throw left is it makes you think you're definitely going to miss again, especially when the miss, miss, miss shouts change to explode, explode, explode shouts. The more I heard explode, the smaller the number six square looked. The smaller the number six square looked, the harder it got for me to aim. The harder it got for me to aim, the surer I was that I was going to miss. So I missed again, by quite a long way, actually. As soon as my stone bounced past the number 10 square, everyone around me jumped back and covered their ears. Apart from Gabby, Gabby knew all along that my head wasn't going to explode. So did I, so did I actually, which is why I wasn't really bothered whether I missed or not. Ha! 
I said to Jack Beatrice pointing at my head with both of my pointing fingers. Who is the fibber, who's the fibber now? But Jack just folded his arms. I didn't say when your head would explode, he grinned. I just said it would explode. Honestly, that boy is the worst. The trouble with doing afternoon lessons thinking your head is about to explode is it makes it really hard to concentrate. Was I pleased to hear the school bell ring at the end of the day? When I met mom outside the school gates, I asked her straight away if my head was actually going to explode. Daisy, I told you yesterday not to take any notice of Jack Beatrice, she said. If he knows he can wind you up, then he will wind you up. So just ignore him. So that's what me and Gabby definitely, absolutely, totally decided we, sh would, we would do. We wouldn't look at Jack Beatrice. We wouldn't go near Jack Beatrice. In fact, we would never listen to Jack Beatrice ever again. Quarter pink. Quadruple pinky promise. So that's the end of this channel. I hope you enjoyed my readings of it. And if you did, please click many likes and subscribe reading club. So I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. Bye, everybody.